Good afternoon, folks. Well, we come out of that room exhilarated. This was an amazing and historic experience where we learned so much, where we began our quest to deal with this so important looming issue, AI. Um, the, we had a diverse group of, of, of participants. They talked at each other unvarnished. Everyone learned from everybody else. And so I am really pleased. As, uh, as some of the people who came out said, it was historic. Um, we got some consensus on some things. First, I asked everyone in the room, is, does, is government needed to play a role in regulating AI? And every single person raised their hands, even though they had diverse views. So that gives us a message here, that we have to try to act, as difficult as the process may be. Second, it was clear that there, was, that there needed to be some government help to deal with what we call transformational innovation, the kind of innovation that AI could bring that could do so much good. Bill Gates talked about feeding the hungry. Uh, one of the others talked about curing cancer. Some of the people in the room talked about strengthening our national security and defense and feeding the hungry. But there was a view, one person said we need a lot of money, 32 billion into transformational uh, innovation, the kind of stuff that maximizes the benefits of AI. But it was also clear that we needed real help in sustainable innovation. That's minimizing the negatives that AI could, could emerge from AI. Whether it's enshrining bias, or the loss of jobs, or even the kinds of doomsday scenarios that were mentioned in the room. And only government can be there to put in guardrails. Because even though some of the companies in this room said they were going to try to implement some of these things themselves, and many had joined the voluntary guidelines that the White House issued, it's clear that there will be rogue companies and other companies that will not go along on their own, and that will bring down everybody. They'll go seek a lowest common denominator. So it is 100% clear that we also need maybe even more government innovation in coming up with sustainable guidelines, which means the government Placing, putting guardrails in place to deal with issues like bias and work, worker education and jobs and even some of the more doomsday scenarios that were presented. And finally, I think there was a consensus we need to figure out a way to balance the two. If you, you don't want one to too much get in the way of the other. You want to be able to maximize the benefits and minimize the harms. And that will be our difficult job. It was great. Over 60 senators came, which showed the interest. You don't usually get 60 senators to come and spend a lot of time uh, at an event like this. And the senators, one of the best things about this is a, a, a vast majority of the Senate learned, we walked out of that room knowing a lot more about how we deal with AI than uh, when they walked in. Let me call on Mike Rounds. Uh First of all, thanks to Senator Schumer and to uh, Senator Heinrich and, and, and Todd right here, Todd Young. Uh, look, this was a bipartisan effort. The idea here was to educate as many of our members as we possibly could, and we had some great teachers in there. We had folks who had opinions that, that they made their wealth in AI. Uh, there were others that were looking at it from the point of view of individual workers and the challenges that it brought. AI is not going away. It's going to be here for a long, long time. The challenge that we have is, will we try to catch up on, first of all, the development of it here in the United States? Can we stay ahead of the rest of the world? Can we lead the rest of the world? And second of all, can we do it in such a fashion that our people truly benefit? And that means not just benefiting in terms of new jobs and opportunities, but in terms of quality of life for the next generation. Can we actually cure cancer? I think we can. Can we create new opportunities for young people? And literally, can we bring other people in here with marvelous talents and actually have them participate in artificial intelligence types of jobs in the future in such a fashion that everybody else benefits? These folks that came in here, the people that were on this panel with us, they spoke very frankly about what the opportunities were 
and they were very frank about the challenges as well. Uh, this is the first of a series that we're going to be doing. We're going to continue it this afternoon, and hopefully it's a step forward in terms of us doing the right things to provide the right balance between incentives uh, to keep AI development here in the United States and also the amount of, of appropriate regulatory oversight so that everybody sees a fair playing field and um, the privacy and the rights to transparency that our citizens demand is achieved. Thank you. Senator, Senator Heinrich, can we please? Uh, I guess what I uh, really appreciated about this conversation is just how nuanced it was. Uh, these are folks from very different perspectives, mm -hmm. but a lot of shared values and, and shared agreement in terms of what our, our North Star should be. Uh, and it really was not a conversation that, that fell into dogmatic or, or partisan lines in any way. And so if we can continue that, uh, as I think this group has really strived for for some time now, then I think we're going to be able to do some exciting things around AI. Uh, young. Well, today is a uh, historic day with this gathering of the best minds when it comes to artificial intelligence technology and, and many other important leaders. They all came together. We had some spirited conversation uh, about the development of this technology and its impact on Americans and, and humanity more generally. Uh, but I was uh, struck by the extent to which there is common agreement among parties, common agreement about the need for government to play an important role to regulate some of the concerns individuals have, com common agreement about the importance of investing in our workforce so that everyone can play a meaningful part in and enjoy a handsome uh, portion of the benefits associated with artificial intelligence, and government involvement in uh, continuing to invest in basic research in this area of, of AI, something Senator Schumer and I have, have worked on together in the past. Right now, the incentives are, are uh, aligned towards those who uh, deploy models quickly to consumers. Uh, it's a testament to uh, the individuals representing businesses in there that many of them have withheld and refrained from deploying those models until we can put together a, a regulatory atmosphere that uh, is consistent with our values. I guess the last thing we agreed on is, is that it's the values of the United States of America uh, that should be embedded in and inform the development of these technologies, not the values, and I'll say this, not the values of the Chinese Communist Party. And, and, and so uh, to the extent we can develop a regulatory structure so we can realize all the uh, upside benefits of, of the technology while ensuring that America continues to lead the way in development of AI, that's going to be a, a, a really important objective. In sum, this hearing made a giant stride towards dealing with the most significant issue that will face the next generation. And it gave us some really good ideas about how to maximize the enormous benefits that AI could bring while minimize the very, very serious risks that AI could bring as well. Mm -hmm. I promised I'd call on her first. Thank you. Um, two quick questions for you. Elon Musk just told me outside that he does not believe that Congress is ready to regulate AI. You say you're exhilarated. What's your response to what he just said? Well. First, in the room, he said it was a tremendous hearing and a giant step forward. And second, um, look, it's a big challenge. This is the hardest thing that I think we have ever undertaken. But we can't be like ostriches and put our head in the sand. Because if we don't step forward, things will be a lot worse. No, nope. next. We next. Against China next. And AI. Sir, did you have any consensus on the licensing approach to AI? We did not. Some people mentioned licensing and testing and other types of ways of regulation. To, this afternoon, we'll get more deeply into that, and we're going to have a bunch further of these inside forums to go into the specifics. This was a broader discussion, and it focused, and the consensus was government must get involved and must get involved on both sides on enhancing the benefits and decreasing the liabilities. And then there were various suggestions as to how to do it, but no consensus emerged yet. Yes? 
explain this forum and subsequent forums as sort of an educational listen and learn effort before you know big comprehensive legislation comes down the pike on AI. Some of your colleagues in the Senate don't seem like they're willing to wait, though. Um, there's a lot of bills that are starting to percolate out kind of across the board on a lot of issues. Hawley and Blumenthal and the Senate Judiciary Committee came out with a pretty specific framework of what they'd like to see. Would you tell them to, you know, pump the brakes a little bit and no. let's educate? Well, there's going to be lots of ideas out there. Hawley and Blumenthal have one. Many other people have other ideas. It will be our job to put together as comprehensive a plan that we can that A, incorporates many different ideas, and B, can pass. We don't want to just put together legislation. It's easy to put together, well, it's not easy, but it's a lot harder to pass legislation on so complex an issue than uh, to get it done. So that's our job. If you go too fast, you could ruin things. The EU went too fast, and now they have to pull back. So what we're saying is on a timeline, it can't be days or weeks, but nor should it be years. It'll be in the general category of months. Yes? Do you know how public police were shutting down public hallways for these CEOs? I did not And know. is it a good use yeah. of I didn't know. I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, know. I didn't know that. I, I leave the safety issues up to the Capitol yeah, Police. Leader Schumer, yes. Who should regulate? Uh, which, which should be a new agency? Should well, be the a few people mentioned a new agency. A few people mentioned uh, an existing agency. A couple of people talked about NIST. That's one of the big questions that we have to answer and we'll continue to discuss. What are your thoughts, Mr. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Schumer. Um, so, was there a disagreement about what kind of regulation is needed for AI? Is there uh, differences? Do they, does there need to be light touch or uh, heavy handed government regulation? There was on different. AI? Uh, we heard the word light touch, and we heard the, uh, some people say avoid light touch. These are the difficulties. I mean, obviously, we have to try to thread the needle, and probably in some areas a lighter touch is called for that are more benign. In some areas, a heavier touch is called for, which could be more dangerous. Yes, way back there. You mentioned China and not losing the U.S. lead on AI. You're planning a trip to China soon. Can you talk about what you hope to accomplish? I'm not going to get into my China trip, Leadership. but talking about China and the lead, Senator Rounds has been sort of one of the leaders on this, so let me call let me on just, him. Let me just share that, that. Right now, in terms of the defense of our country, there will never be a war, there will never be another battle that's fought without AI directly involved in it. And it's been that way for years now. It's going to be even more in the future. So our goal here is that our young men and women never enter for a fair fight, that they always have the advantage. They will not have that unless they control AI and cyber. That's what will start things in the future. Uh, when we talk about what happened in here today, uh, we talked about the, uh, the, our military and about our need to be able to have the best AI capabilities that are possible. We had a lot of discussion about that. We also had discussions about whether or not Congress should, at this point, regulate it. There was a discussion saying, yes, we have to have a regulatory prospect but we're not ready to write the regs today. We're not there. That's what this is all about. Let's bring this in and then let's look at, on a committee by committee basis, where those regs should be at. If you ask the folks in judiciary, they're gonna wanna have a say in terms of how you regulate AI from a judicial standpoint. Commerce is gonna have a real interest in whether or not uh, AI is a part of their regulatory uh, responsibility. The same with the armed services, the same with the intel committee. So. When we talk about are we ready to go out and write legislation, absolutely not. Are we going to look at lots of different ideas and will the committees all have a say in it? We sure hope so because that's the process here that works the best on a bipartisan basis. And let me just end, let me just please, you have to give everyone a chance. Um, the bottom line is one of the reasons we did this, there were many, is so to give the committees the kind of nutrient agar, if you will, the kind of information that they need to pass the proper legislation. And the fact that there were so many senators here and so many uh, um, ranking members and uh, committee, committee chairs, committee yep. chairs, but also their chief staff, what right. do they call them? Staff. staff directors of the committees here showed that we accomplished that. But we've always expected the, the actual legislation to come through the committees. We're going to have to help monitor that. We're going to have to make sure it's not contradictory or they don't overlap. But the committees are going to be 
doing their own hearings and drafting legislation. But this was a unique opportunity. No committee was going to be able to put this together. And it worked out to a great extent. Will any of these insight forms be open to the public in the future? Yes, some of them may be. But, you know, this was a, look, the purpose here was to get the senators to hear in an unvarnished way a discussion that went back and forth. Not five minutes here, five minutes there. And it worked. And almost every senator I talked to was extremely happy with what happened here. Yes? Thank you. Can you talk about how today's meeting would help the U.S. in its competition with China? Well, we have to stay at the forefront of AI, both on the positive side, increasing the benefits, and the negative side, decreasing the liabilities. And the fact that we can bring everybody together and come with reg legislation that would move things forward on both sides will help us significantly. I want to see if Martin or... Uh, I, I would just say, say go ahead. Th there's not a, a world in which China can put that room together. Like the government <laughs> in China is trying very hard on AI, but the leadership in AI is in the United States of America right now, and we need to we need to maintain that leadership, and then make sure that it's our values of trust and responsibility and uh, non-discrimination that inform the development of these systems. I'll just say, <clears throat> I've just got uh, two thoughts. Number one, if you don't know how to spell nutrient agar, <laughs> Senator Schumer will be staying afterwards I went, to assess. I took biology, <laughs> and they gave us these little plates that look like jello, and you put a bacteria on it, and it grew. They didn't even need you to explain. Uh, <clears throat> No, but secondly, in, in something I hope to explore, perhaps this afternoon, uh, if, if it, there's an opportunity to tease it out, but definitely in the coming information sessions, is, is how we can incentivize more talent into government. Right. So w that we have the ability to apply existing laws to an AI-enabled world, and so that we can deal with unanticipated contingencies, conversing with the developers and the companies and the stakeholders. That takes a lot of expertise, uh, and, and much of it is going and, to have to be recruited and, both, and retained. Both sides agreed with that. The people from yes. the company said yes. they needed more, and the people like Randy Weingarten and Liz Shuler and Maya Wiley on their side said more. And I gotta tell you, it was a really robust discussion. Both, you know, everybody had a lot of say. This was not a one-sided discussion in any way. Yes, you're very you eager. You talked about legislating within months, not years, but, but do you believe Congress can get something done next year during an election well, year? Could you speak to your conversations with Speaker McCarthy and House Republicans? Okay, two things. One, this man has made it eminently clear over and over again, and I agree with it, that we're not going to get anything done unless it's bipartisan. And that may mean we're not able to get everything done if the parties don't agree, but we can get a whole lot done in a bipartisan way. And that's what this showed. There were a lot of Republican senators, Democratic senators. All of us are sort of having agreement. I've spoken to Speaker McCarthy about this, and he was encouraging. And hopefully the House can sort of try to do similar type things. Okay? How many more yes. A, a bunch more on different subjects. Number, Not yet. Uh, You'll hear. How, yes. often, how often do you... What's the third rail for regulation? What? What's the third rail for regula like regulation? Well, there are all kinds of problems. I mean, the, the question of how you achieve the balance. You know, there are going to be some who say if you go too strict on the sustainability side, you'll cut back on all the good things that happen. There are others who say if you go too narrow on the sustainability side, the thing will reeve out of control and we'll have nothing done. So it's a balance. Thank you.